Hello everybody, Dark Skeleton here, and in this video we're going to be covering what is an MMORPG. That is a six letter acronym, and what it stands for is a massively multiplayer. Let me go ahead and move this. Online role playing game. Now, if you saw my previous Blackboard video, you would know what an RPG is. I'll have a link to that right now so you can catch up on that. But basically, it's a story and statistics heavy driven style of game. But when you throw on the MMO aspect of it, the game changes in quite a few different ways. So in a single player RPG, you normally play alone. So you're just one guy playing the main hero of the game and everything revolves around what you the player is doing inside of that game but when you throw in the massively multiplayer online aspect of the game you generally have your computer connect to a central server now this server is going to be run by the game company which could be say blizzard entertainment in the case of the most popular MMORPGs, such as World of Warcraft. And what occurs on this server is everything that actually happens in the game. So it's not really happening on your computer, you're just receiving information from the, uh, basically the game developers, the game running on Blizzard servers, and you're not the only one receiving that information, but also other people are going to be connected to the game in the exact same way. So you might have not only one, two, or three people connected to the game simultaneously, but you might have thousands of players. And in the most popular MMORPGs, what occurs is that they need many servers to actually sustain the game because there's so many players, such as a million or even a hundred thousand, that not everybody can possibly connect to one server at a time. Now, in exchange for the privilege of connecting to these servers, because they do have operational costs, you, the player, may have to pay something like $15 a month in order to access the game. Now, that does give you access to play on any servers, but your characters are going to be server-specific. So you might have one character on this server, you might have one character on that server, and th those individual characters can only play with other characters on that server. There are things like realm transfer for some MMOs where they can move characters between servers, but that usually has an extra fee associated with it. Now, enough for the technical aspect of an MMORPG. What is the benefit of having hundreds or thousands of players connect to one game at the same time? Well, for one thing, it allows you to play with your friends, obviously. When you're playing a multiplayer game, it's more fun to play with other people. I mean, is it really going to be as fun to save the world, collect all this sweet loot, and level up if you don't get to share those moments with friends or at least other people who really enjoy the same game? No, not usually. So what people tend to do is they group together and they form what's called a guild, or some variant of that name. And these guilds of many heroes in your fantasy or sci-fi RPG, inside this guild they share resources, so money occasionally, though new, normally not like taking money out of people's pockets or a direct tax or anything like that, but guilds, um, if they're well integrated into the game, will have benefits like 10% of whatever you make automatically goes into the guild bank on top of the money you already make. So you keep 100%, but then the game adds an extra 10% for your entire guild to share. It might mean recipes, so... If you want to craft epic items. There might be guild recipes where you can share the best items in the game by having, let's say, someone who's really good at crafting armor make armor for everybody in the guild, so... You take those recipes and you enhance everybody's power by basically sharing in the glory. So in addition to sharing resources with other players, what having a guild allows you to do is reliably get players together, friends or fellow players, to go on things like raids. Now in the context of a game like World of Warcraft, this means a 10 or 25 player dungeon. 
meaning you have 10 or 25 players in the group simultaneously to defeat big ass bosses. Now these raids, they have the best loot and the best fights and generally are considered the pinnacle of every MMORPG, at least with a player versus environment experience. However, it's worth mentioning that outside of having a guild, outside of pre-made content, there's usually something along the lines of a five-man dungeon. And this does vary from game to game, but while you are leveling up, leveling, remember, one of the key aspects of an RPG, um, you can go on easier dungeons to get pretty good loot and pretty good leveling up experience points so that you can progress to the point where you get later on and you hit the level cap and that's when you create the guild and that's where you have all this wonderful things like crafting the best gear, sharing resources with your guild, and defeating the toughest bosses in the game. But is there more to an MMORPG than that? Yes there is. Almost every MMORPG on the market also has player versus player combat. One of the benefits of having a lot of people on the server at one time means you can actually fight against other players almost always. And this works out pretty reliably because game developers will add things to the MMO such as Battlegrounds. Of course mostly using uh, World of Warcraft here because it is the atypical MMORPG but it will vary from time to time, game to game. Which in the case of a Battleground is something like 10 to 25 random players or pre-made players versus another 10 to 25 and actually if I recall there are even 40 man battlegrounds which is absolutely ridiculous so that means 80 players in one battle. Now other forms of PvP may involve just straight up dueling other players for fun so that would be 1v1 but World of Warcraft also has something called Arena, and Arena might be considered the pinnacle of serious player versus player because it allows you to bring a smaller group, such as 2v2, 3v3, or 5v5, meaning 5 players on both sides of the arena, and these pre-made matches you just have to defeat your opponents before they kill you, but there's a lot of intricate details about that, such as line of sight, when to use cooldown abilities, and other such things. In fact, one of the more modern things you could compare Arena to is a MOBA game. Now, you don't level up inside of Arena mode, but the aspect of having five heroes versus five heroes is very similar to other games like League of Legends. So an MMO is probably sounding like a pretty sweet thing, right? I mean, you get to play with your friends, other people online, it's a kind of a social experience, and you get to, more importantly, enjoy the coolest fights in the world together in the most epic fashion, where it's not just you taking down the final boss, but 20 other people who are there with you. But MMORPGs have their own faults as well such as grinding, and this might be one of the biggest offenders of an MMORPG. In order to keep people uh, playing, paying that $15 a month fee, you have to give them enough content to keep wanting to play month after month after month after month. Usually games, they only last for like a week and then people are done with it, and the game developers are fine with that because they didn't invest that many resources compared to an MMORPG and creating the game and you already paid $60 for it, so they're satisfied. But an MMORPG has to justify their server costs, right? So they can't just shut down the game after a month or else they would lose money. They have to maintain that monthly fee. And in order to do that, most MMORPGs have a lot of grinding. Now what I mean by grinding is that you have slow leveling. And by slow I mean like you have to kill pretty much hundreds of dudes, hundreds and hundreds of wild boars or whatever in order to level up. Maybe it's cats instead. But generally you have these quests. And they're not all that interesting in most cases. Games will try to make them more interesting, but it's like, hey, I need 10 boar asses. So go kill 10 boars for me. And then the next quest is kill six 
I don't know, guards of the opposing side. And if you've been around MMORPGs for any period of time, you know that these quests kind of become, yeah, yeah, whatever, I know. Just do the thing and get the experience points so that I can hit that level cap. And when you get to the level cap, you can finally uh, do those really sweet missions, the raids into the dungeons that require 25 people. But the problem is that while MMORPGs do have high points, they spread them out over a long period of time to keep you there. Remember, it's about that $15 a month fee, so they have to make the content last. And that means that the majority of the time you're playing an MMORPG, the content is kind of meh. It's not like you're playing a, uh, a high action game where it's boss fight after boss fight after boss fight. So while you can look at the total time played in an MMORPG, which may be hundreds of hours, it may even be thousands of hours, it may even be tens of thousands of hours for the most serious players, the average quality of the content, it's maybe not going to be as fun all the time as just picking up a $60 game and burning through it in 6 hours. But remember, the strength of an MMORPG isn't the fact that the content is always super exciting, but rather that you get to do something with your friends. And while it is in the context of a digital world, it can be meaningful for players. Because as you're going through the game, if it's well designed, actions are going to have results. And these results, while in a regular game, would just mean basically, oh, you beat the game, the game's over. In an MMORPG, it might actually affect the things your friends are doing. Like, you might find a rare item that can help your friends out. It might be something like building a guild house that all of your friends can share and go into and see all the changes you've made inside of there as well. But in the end, the things you do, they do change the world often in minor but noticeable ways, much more so than you would have in any other game where you know that whatever you do, it's not relevant, it doesn't change anything. But in an MMORPG, as a server or a community, the actions you make might mean that your server can actually finish the final boss sooner because you've contributed in some way. It might also mean competing with some of the best guilds out there. Um, it might mean competing with some of the best guilds out there to see who can actually finish the final boss first. And then when you are one of those guilds, you get a lot of respect for being able to do that before everybody else on the server. And then everybody knows your name, and that's actually kind of a cool thing. So that's going to be it for this video on what a MMORPG is. I've been Dark Skeleton. I hope you found this video useful and entertaining, and I will see you in my future content.